Mistake. A company rejected the patent for the telephone. In 1876, the most important communications technology was the telegraph. A wealthy company called Western Union was in control of this technology. The president of the company, William Orton, was offered the patent for an invention called the telephone for $100,000. Orton sent a response to the 29-year-old inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell. It said, After careful consideration of your invention, while it is a very interesting novelty, we have come to the conclusion that it has no commercial possibilities. What use could this company make of an electrical toy? Bell kept the patent and created his own telephone company, which became the largest in the U.S. The patent Bell had offered Western Union eventually became the most valuable patent in history. Orton could have made one of the best deals in business history. Instead, he may have made the worst business mistake in history. Mistake the Titanic ignored warnings about icebergs. On April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic, the largest and most modern passenger ship of its time, hit an iceberg and sank. This resulted in the deaths of 1,517 people. Yet incredibly, this tragedy could have easily been avoided. On the day the Titanic sank, it had received five warnings from other ships about heavy ice in the area. However, the captain was not worried. In fact, he even increased the speed of the ship so that it could arrive in New York a day earlier than expected. That evening, while the Titanic's radio operator was sending out personal messages from the passengers, he received a sixth ice warning. This one warned of an iceberg directly in the path of the Titanic. The operator was supposed to give the message to the captain, but busy with his task, he put the message aside. It never reached the captain. If it had, the Titanic tragedy might never have happened. Mistake. Russia sold Alaskan gold to the U.S. Alaska had been considered a burden rather than an asset by Russia for a long time. It was remote, indefensible, and of little benefit. So when William Seward, U.S. Secretary of State, began negotiations on his own initiative, he expected to encounter some opposition. However, the outline of the deal was accepted by the cabinet, and the agreement was signed in March 1867 transferring Alaska to the United States for a payment of $7.2 million. However, the purchase of a seemingly desolate and mostly frozen land was greeted with criticism by the press and the public. Alaska was referred to as Seward's Folly, Seward's Icebox, or President Johnson's Polar Bear Garden attitudes that must have changed drastically after the discovery of gold. Russia should have investigated potential resources before selling the land to the U.S. at the price of about 2.5 cents per acre. Mistake. Coca-Cola tampered with their successful formula. Coca-Cola was launched in the 1880s. By 1980, it had been the most popular soft drink in the world for nearly 100 years. However, by that time, Coke had more competition, and its sales figures started slipping. In an effort to boost sales, Coca-Cola created a new, improved formula. This new formula was tested in 200,000 taste tests, and the results were clear most people much preferred the flavor to the original Coke. The Coca-Cola company decided to stop producing the formula they had been using for 100 years and to replace it with new Coke. This was an enormous marketing mistake. People were outraged that the original Coke was no longer available and the new Coke 
was a flop. Coca-Cola executives must have been surprised. They had to get rid of New Coke quickly and bring back the original formula. What did you do on Thursday night? My family took me out because I graduated. Oh, no. I forgot that you graduated last week. I'm so sorry. Why? I should have gotten you something for the occasion. I should have at least called you. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. No big deal? Of course it's a big deal. It was your graduation. I don't know how I forgot about it. Though, come to think of it, I was so focused on studying for final exams, your graduation must have slipped my mind. I feel awful about it. Can you forgive me? You're making too much of it. Forget about it. Anyway, you were studying for finals. That's a good excuse. Don't sweat it. But I feel like such a flake. No more apologies. You're making me wish I hadn't mentioned it to you. Sorry. And in other news tonight, we have two stories of people making very silly mistakes. In the first story, a man attempting to solve a problem creates a much bigger problem. Joshua Mullen of Mobile, Alabama, was alarmed when he saw a swarm of bees in his shed. At first, he wasn't sure how to get rid of them. Then, he had an idea. But it was an idea that he should have thought twice about. Mullen dumped a can of gasoline onto a pile of rags in the shed and then walked away. He thought the smell might get rid of the bees, but the pilot light of a hot water heater in the shed set the gas fumes on fire. In moments, the shed went up in flames, causing $80,000 worth of damage. The fire did get rid of the bees, but in Mullen's words, Looking back at all this, there might have been a better way. The really silly part of this story is that Mullen is a mechanic who has received training in handling gasoline safely in order to avoid starting fires. He should have known better. The second story involves a man who wanted to come up with a unique way to give his wife a ring on their anniversary. 28-year-old Alec Bell of East London wanted to surprise his wife, Emma. So, he had a florist put a $10,000 diamond ring inside a helium balloon. Bell said, I had been planning this for ages. I thought it would make Emma really happy. 
he couldn't have known that he was the one in for a surprise. When Bell left the shop, a strong wind pulled the balloon from his hand. The balloon floated into the sky. Bell said, I just watched as it went farther and farther up in the air. I felt like such an idiot. It cost a fortune, and I knew my wife would be furious with me. Bell spent two hours chasing the balloon in his car, but eventually lost sight of it and had to give up. He must have had fun explaining what had happened to his wife. One, but it was an idea that he should have thought twice about. Two, looking back at all this, there might have been a better way. Three, he should have known better. Four, he couldn't have known that he was the one in for a surprise. Five. He must have had fun explaining what had happened to his wife. One. But it was an idea that he should have thought twice about. Two. Looking back at all this, there might have been a better way. Three, he should have known better. Four, he couldn't have known that he was the one in for a surprise. Five, he must have had fun explaining what had happened to his wife. Happy accidents. When we make a mistake, often our first instinct is to say, oh no, and to feel regret and maybe even embarrassment at our failure. But mistakes and accidents are not always a bad thing. In fact, they sometimes give rise to extraordinary ideas. In 1492, Christopher Columbus set out to discover a new route to Asia. He did not reach Asia, but his failure resulted in his discovering the new world. There are many stories of such happy accidents throughout modern history. For example, one of the greatest medical discoveries of the 20th century was antibiotics, a kind of medication used to kill bacteria that cause disease. Since its discovery, antibiotics have saved millions of lives. Yet the discovery of the first antibiotic happened by accident. In 1928, a Scottish scientist named Alexander Fleming was researching a kind of bacteria called Staphylococcus. He conducted experiments with the bacteria in dishes. Fleming was brilliant, but he was messy and absent-minded. When he left his laboratory to go on vacation, instead of cleaning up, he left the bacteria in the dishes. When he returned, he noticed that mold had grown in the dishes while he was gone. He could have just thrown the dishes away. Fortunately, instead, he looked at them under a microscope. Fleming found that the area around the mold was free of bacteria. He realized that the dangerous bacteria must have been dissolved by the mold. These dirty dishes led to the discovery of penicillin, the first antibiotic. Today, this life-saving drug is used around the world. Each year, there are over 80 million prescriptions written for penicillin in the U.S. alone. Not all lucky accidents have changed the way we live in dramatic ways. Some fortunate accidents have just made life a little more convenient.
But many of these conveniences have become such a part of our everyday lives that we've come to take them for granted. The discovery of Velcro is one such fortunate accident. One summer day in 1948, a Swiss inventor named Georges de Mistral went for a hike. When he returned, he was covered in burrs, seed sacks that cling to clothes. Nature designed burrs to do this in order to spread seeds to new areas. De Mistral became curious about how these burrs attach themselves to clothes and hair. He inspected one of the burrs from his pants under a microscope. He saw that it had countless tiny hooks that clung to the tiny loops in the fabric of his pants. This gave him the idea to design a new kind of fastener. The fastener would be made of two nylon strips, one side with stiff hooks like the burrs and the other side with loops like the fabric of his pants. His invention, Velcro, has since become ubiquitous. It can be found on everything from shoes to wallets to blood pressure cuffs to space shuttles. Another modern invention we owe to a happy accident is post-it notes, those small pieces of notepaper that can be stuck and unstuck again and again. In 1970, Spencer Silver was working in a research laboratory trying to create a strong adhesive. He created a new adhesive that stuck to objects, but it could also easily be lifted off them. Because the adhesive was so weak, Silver considered it a failure. He shouldn't have. A few years later, a co-worker of Silver's was looking in a book. He used scraps of paper to keep his place in the book, but the scraps kept falling out. Remembering Silver's invention, the co-worker put some of the adhesive on the scraps. It was perfect. The scraps stayed in place but came off easily, so they didn't damage the book. Post-it notes were introduced in 1980 and quickly became an essential office product around the world. All of these stories show that accidents are not always a bad thing and that not all mistakes should automatically be discarded. Instead, perhaps we should take a closer look at our accidents and mistakes. They just may reveal the solutions to a problem or pave the way to an extraordinary new idea. I was traveling to London and had just gone through security check at the airport. When I picked up my coat, it felt a bit heavier than usual, but I quickly put it down to fatigue as I had worked through the night in order to complete some work before I left. I checked the time and decided that it was far too early to proceed to the departure gate, so I sauntered about the duty-free section of the terminal, having a look at displays. I was examining a computer case when I heard the announcement. Somebody had mistakenly taken a coat that was a lot lighter than his and requested that the person who might have accidentally taken the wrong coat meet him at the information desk. I did not take any notice at first, but when the announcement was repeated for a third time, I stopped and had a look at the label of the coat I was carrying. I had never seen it before. When I got closer to the information desk, I saw someone who looked vaguely familiar. I smiled, holding up the coat. He smiled back, pointing to my coat. We exchanged coats and introductions. Surprisingly, we shared the same family name. We decided to spend the time left before our flights working out possible connections over a cup of coffee. As it turned out, we were both descendants of the same family. We simply happened to be in different places at different times. We found the physical resemblance quite amusing. We could have been brothers or cousins. We have since kept in touch and have become very close friends or relatives, if you wish. If I hadn't taken the wrong coat at the security check, I might never have run into my long-lost relative. 
I would not have known of the existence of someone who looked like me and carried the same name. I would have missed the opportunity to encounter an important person in my life.